Welcome to the 2023 Antigua Forum, hosted by the Universidad Francisco Marroquin, a free market university here in Guatemala. Today, we are with Robert Chatfield, who is president and CEO of Free to Choose Network, a global media organization responsible for the original Free to Choose series by Milton Friedman. Robert has also been the executive producer of several films and served as CFO of Fluid Imaging Technologies, a manufacturer of scientific instruments. Welcome, Robert. Great to see you today. Robert, tell us a little bit about um, your organization, Free to Choose Network. Um, you know, you seem to use various forms of media, most especially film, to build support for personal, economic, and political freedom. What is it about uh, film that makes um, such an impact on people? Uh, really, it's a, uh, the anti-white paper, if you will. There's a lot of uh, organizations out there that do really fine research. They uh, disseminate the research to a very small, limited audience. And by using film and mass media, we're able to take and translate that into something that uh, the general public can consume. And I think that's what we're really out there trying to do is you change in the hearts and minds of people there. Rarely is it done with a white paper, but that's always the basis. You work on facts first. Uh, tell us a little bit about Milton Friedman and the Free to Choose Network. So uh, it really all started when Bob Chittister, the founder of our organization, uh, he ran the Erie, Pennsylvania public television station and he saw a 13-hour series from John Kenneth Galbraith with regards to the age of uncertainty. And Bob thought, we need to do something different. We have to have a response to this 13-hour series. And so the uh, head of the Corporation for Public Broadcasting was a guy named Alan Wallace, who happened to be one of the three musketeers with Milton Friedman and George Stigler at the University of Chicago. And Alan made that introduction, and the rest, as they say, is history. Bob went out, and for about four years, they produced that project. And it really did. It changed the world. And I think that's when Bob uh, realized you really can use film to change those hearts and minds. I wonder, you know, Milton Friedman was a, you know, a Nobel, Nobel laureate economist, and so many people remember him because of film. Do you think that, you know, the power of film also is something that made Milton Friedman uh, and his message more powerful? It wasn't until after he did the series that he realized the power of it. And the other part about that, Milton was a great intellectual, as people know, but at heart, he was a salesman. And that's a unique combination for a lot of the people that are around in the uh, intellectual movement, if you will. And George Stigler, who I mentioned earlier, is a great example of that. George Stigler also won the Nobel Prize. Nobody's heard of George Stigler. He gave one speech after that and refused to talk to the media ever again. Do you have any knowledge on this? Milton Friedman, it seems like uh, a lot of his messaging was able to be delivered in very small, um, particular messages that were able to get to people very fast. Did he, is, was he skilled at doing that naturally? Did he have to work to do that? Uh, he had to work to do that, but I, I think, as I said, the salesmanship, I think, came naturally to him. Uh, I don't want to shortchange his partner, Rose Friedman, in all of this, by the way. I think she was always that person who, who was the counterbalance to what Milton was doing. Uh, a great story is, is that uh, Milton was in a conversation with somebody one time, and the person kept asking him deeper and deeper questions, and Milton responded, well, it's been through multiple regression analysis. And Rose walked in and said, because there's nothing so holy as regression analysis. <laughs> so today, especially in the United States, we live in a culture with a very short attention span. How do you think about this when approaching how you reach people through film and other forms of technology? I think it's a myth that there's a short attention span. What it really is is that I think you have about two minutes to capture somebody's attention. My children are 18 and 22 right now. They will binge watch a cartoon series for the entire weekend if they find that interesting. But you have to draw them in within that two minutes. And I think that's the misnomer. People will, and they still do watch. If somebody watches uh, episode one of Free to Choose still 40 plus years later, they're very likely to continue watching the other Free to Choose episodes. That's interesting. Um, so your personal path is quite curious. You have a previous career in manufacturing of scientific instruments. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your education and professional background in that area? Sure, actually I'm a finance guy. And so I went to school for accounting, my master's degree is in finance. That's actually where I encountered Milton Friedman. I know Milton Friedman from the monetary history of the United States by doing a research paper around that topic. And it wasn't until years later, I'd never even had a television. I had no clue there was a free to choose television series. I'd seen the book, but I didn't know anything about that. And so I'd always straddled one foot in academia and one foot in the business world. So I was a finance professional and I've always taught finance classes as an adjunct professor. What was your journey in going from, you know, being a finance guy in that manufacturing world uh, to actually getting into this sort of academic think tank 
film world? What was, what was that journey like? Uh, it started literally as my first job out of graduate school when most of my friends went to go work at Fidelity and State Street Bank and other financial powerhouses in Boston. And I found a little think tank called the Pioneer Institute. And so that's where I became exposed to all this concept of the think tanks and the great thinkers. And again, I was a libertarian by, uh, by nature, if you will. You know, I was an Adam Smith kind of guy from as long as I ever read Adam Smith. But you know, the expansion of my knowledge base came from that. What was it that led you from maybe being in a traditional think tank model, like the Pioneer Institute, to making the leap into film? And what kind of other films have you been involved with uh, other than uh, the ones we know with Milton Friedman. Yeah, really the transition was pure dumb luck, and I'm, I'm serious about that. Uh, a LinkedIn sent me a job notice one day, and I'd never heard of the Free to Choose Network. But I thought, Free to Choose, that must be Milton Friedman. And I sent, the, uh, I sent them a, 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 just a note. I didn't even send them a resume. I said, great to discover your organization. And they called me that day and said, when can you get here? Uh, and so quite literally, that was my transition from the private uh, industry and academia. And again, I'd always been teaching, so I think that they liked that background. But you know, I had done mergers and acquisitions work, and they said, really, the role of this isn't making films. Uh, while I'm the president and CEO of the company, I've never been behind the camera. That's not my job. My job is, is to understand the philosophy that we're trying to get across to the public and go out and raise the money for that. And if I can do those two things there, that's where we're successful at. And so I think that the organization was looking for that skill set. But for me, it was a matter of uh, having taught for so long, I knew the impact I could make with a class of 20 or 30. And the opportunity to be able to make an impact with millions by doing that same messaging was very intriguing to me. So you translated teaching in the classroom mm -hmm. to teaching behind the cameras and, and bringing that message through film. Absolutely. So not well known to most people, the Free to Choose Network, we're known for our documentary films. They're on public television. Most recent ones, uh, Thomas Sowell, Common Sense in a Senseless World, a fantastic film that introduced a lot of people to Tom Sowell. But mine was, well, how do we now translate that into the classroom space? And we have a education division called izit.org, I-Z-Z-I-T.org. And we make videos specifically for classroom usage there. And I'm really proud of one we did on financial literacy, something that the, even the people here in Guatemala could get benefit from. This financial literacy video is actually the number one video for financial literacy on YouTube. And when we go through and look at where the uh, people are coming from, it's all over the world. You know, we thought, oh, we'll make this for high school classrooms in the United States, but it's people from all over the world saying, wow, we don't even learn this in our country. Uh, so you have seen some of the projects here at the Antigua Forum mm -hmm. and experienced the process and journey that many of the project owners take throughout uh, their time here. How has it made you think about projects that you work on and how to better approach them in the future? I took more notes here, I think, about my own future projects than I was taking notes with regards to what was going on. I was going to say, uh, the benefit here is just amazing. Uh, you really do start to think about it. It's the questions that other people are asking that make you think, how do I translate that back to my own environment? And here, there happened to be two or three different education-oriented things also. So we were really, uh, you know, while we were trying to help these other organizations along, it was helping me along also, just in terms of asking the same questions that people should be asking of me. Great. Well, Robert, thank you so much for being with us here at the Antigua Forum, and we hope to see you back here in the future. Great to see you. Mm -hmm.